Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 95 of Darwell20's Let's Play series. Uh, today I would look at, uh, let's see about speeding up this farm a little bit, which is kind of the whole reason we got into blood magic in the first place. Uh, so I want to check out one of the rituals that allow us to do that. I might want to check out some of the cool sigils and nifty toys that we can play with, because blood magic has some cool stuff. Blood magic has some really cool stuff. Uh, and then in addition, I'd like to, I don't know, just see what other kind of neat things we can do. Now we like, it's funny, I love automating things so much, I sometimes get in this zone where I'm like, all right, I automated the whole mod, and now why did I set it all up again? What kind of cool things can we do with it? Like we literally spent so much time getting the thing automated, and that was fun, right? So like on its own, that's 100%, like, you know, one of those like it's the journey, not the destination kind of things. But I definitely need to find a, a good use for some of the uh, amazingness that I automated here. Uh, now, we didn't go too much into the will system. I always get confused and a little bit fuzzy on the whole wills thing. We might look into it. Um, Demon will can be used to modify certain things, including, apparently, you can use it to modify your rituals, I believe. Um, so we didn't mess with that too much. Um... Oh. And I'm not going to. So, long story short, meh, we'll see. Uh, but we definitely want to check out some of the cool sigils that are available, because there's a lot of them. And uh, so let's start with the rituals that we want to do. So let's note the ones that we want to check out. Um, I would like to do... Um, do, 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 ritual of magnetism, no, probably not. That's the one that pulls all the ores out of the ground, right? and puts them into its place. I mean, that's kind of a neat one, to be fair. But no, we already have a lot of good automation going around there. Ritual of Regeneration. Regeneration on entities within its range if they are missing health. I mean, that's kind of cool. Ritual of the Crusher. What's an Enderman doing here? I did turn off my mob farm, right? Though it is, in fairness, dark enough for things to happen in there. So that's a thing. So a couple of the cool ones. We don't super need it in this pack, but this is a fun one. Ritual of the Pure Spring. It just generates a water source block on top of it. So literally, if you scoop it up, it'll put another water source block there. But the one that is kind of cool is Serenade of the Nether. Does the same thing, but with lava. So this is literally an infinite lava producer. So that's kind of a neat one. And that's a very simple rune situation to set up. Uh, this one's also a really neat one. If you're setting up an animal farm, this will make animals grow up faster so increases the maturity rate of baby animals within its range i'm not aware of many other mods that allow this very few mods give you the option to make animals grow faster so that's kind of cool um cleansing soul that's for living armor which we didn't really get into too much well of suffering we already played with uh so i might want to do the the serenade of the nether just because it's kind of fun to have an infinite lava source block i uh, will see and then uh ritual of the green grove this is what i was talking about for crops uh, grows crops within its area. I have no idea how this compares, right? Because a lot of blood magic has been coming across from previous versions. Um, so I don't know how it compares to today's crop growing mechanics. But this is where I was talking about that you can modify certain rituals with will. So normal will increases the speed of all ritual operations based on the total amount of raw will in the aura. Uh, corrosive entities within range are attacked by nearby plants, leeching away their life to feed their growth. That's kind of neat. Uh, vengeful increases the rate that a growth tick is successful. Uh, destructive increases the maximum growth range of the ritual based on the total amount of destructive will in the aura. We might want to look at this. We might want to. Seeds are replanted and blocks are hydrated within the specified range. Well, that's cool. And then you can modify the growth range with your ritual tinkerer. You can modify the steadfast and corrosive range as well if you've got steadfast going on. Neat. That's cool. I might, might want to play with the wills. Just a little bit. Just to kind of see how that works. Because I don't think I've ever modified blood magic rituals. But let's just get the ritual going and then we'll kind of go from there. Right? So, first things first. Green Grove needs eight total runes. Um, so, we want uh, ritual stones. We're going to want a master ritual stone. We are missing one blood orb because of course we are. Don't we have the, it might be, it might be, it might be in the table. Um, let's make sure that we've got a sufficient amount of reinforced slates. The other thing I wanted to mention here, by the way, is we've got a million LP, which means we've maxed out. This will now fully automate and do the thing properly. So that's neat. 
my my empty blood orb might be here yes there he is cool okay so ritual stone we want the master please do do do, do. Bum, bum, bum. that's cool and then we're gonna want um one set of ritual stones and another set of ritual stones for the eight and i'm gonna put the 16 reinforced in there so that we have enough bada bing bada boom how cool is that all right so now we should be good to go do the ritual the full spring underneath so i think that this is easy I think that this is easy. I think it's actually super easy. We just need our activation crystal. That's going to be, and our ritual diviner. And the ritual diviner, we are more than fine to, to use the same one. We don't need dusk for this, so we could have done this one without dusk. Uh, Green Grove, there he is. So I'm pretty sure, what's the default range? I don't know what the default range is, but what's the maximum? Range, range is horizontal radius four vertical radius four okay not great but not terrible so let's go now to be fair it's a pretty small ritual so it's not hard to have more than one of these if we so decide right So what I should be able to do, right? So if this <clears throat> is this dude, let's go three blocks in from there. So that would be one, two, three. Seems like a good time. Three blocks in from here. So that would be one, two, three. I feel like that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's a three by three area, so there's no real center, but I think that's good. All right, so just cleaning up some of my inventory real quick. I think we're ready to do this, so let's make sure this is ready. Let's get our ritual diviner, which by the way, you can see um, what ritual is selected on the tooltip here. You can see also how many total runes are needed, uh, and you can also hold shift and alt to see augmentation information. That's kind of neat. That's cool. I like that. All right, let's get it built. So you can see a, a rendered preview of what it's going to look like. Boom, 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 boom. Now we're ready to rush the energy through the crystal. Boom. And he should be running. And if we were to um, <clears throat> check this out, growth, the area that the ritual will grow plants in. Yeah, that looks good. Nice. So how, uh, how good is this, I guess, is the question. Not 100% sure, just have no idea how good this is. Uh, now, obviously, we can augment it, it looks like, with the whole will system. So that's neat. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure how useful this will be. Let's, let's just find out. I mean, it looks like it's doing pretty good. We've already had a few a few trees grow in this area pretty quickly. I feel like that's I feel like that's pretty noticeable, right? Based on what we've seen so far, I think it's already pretty obvious. I'm feeling good about it. It's a small area of effect, unfortunately. A pretty small area of effect. But... It does do pretty good. If I wanted to widen it, I could, by the way. Um, I think I could at least. What's the max range on it, did it say? Horizontal radius and vertical radius. So if I wanted to, I could do something like this to this. Oh, that's, well, hello. I'm getting stuck in the trees. I think it worked. Nobody panic, but I think this worked. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Nobody panic, but I think that worked. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% working, actually. That's really nice. That's really quite nice. As long as it doesn't stick my, you know, carts up too badly, which hopefully it won't. But I, I mean, it's looking good, right? It's looking good to me. That is really cool. All right, that ain't bad. Now, the other good thing about these rituals is you can go ahead and turn them off with a redstone signal. Bop, bada, bop. And now he's no longer running, which means that he should no longer... We'll still see the render of what area of effect it works in, but he, we should no longer see um, it growing faster. See, it's already noticeably slower. That's actually a really powerful ritual. I like that a lot. And you know what I love? Coming back into this room and seeing 32 reinforced slates. It's so good. It's so good. I love, I love automation that just really works well. Because so, sometimes you get automation that works, but it's like a little sticky and not great. This automation, perfect. 
At least so far. I ain't seen any major problems with it. So what other cool stuff can we check out? Uh, we were going to do Serenade of the Nether, so we might do that one. So that means uh, another Master Ritual Stone, and uh, I believe we just need four. So that should be a quick and easy set. Um, no big deal there. We were going to check out Serenade of the Nether, and then we were also going to check out... Was there any other rituals we wanted to check out right now? I, there's more rituals that are probably work in progress, right? Usually there's um, there's there's a bit more than this, I think. Uh, if we wanted to automate will crystals and play with that at all, we could do that with rituals. I don't know if we're going to do that. Because we've known a lot of blood magic lately. I'm probably towards the end of my blood magic segment. We might circle back to it at a future point to do things with will. But, you know, I didn't be, you know... A little bit, not too much. Cool. So with that said, we've got all that kind of, yeah, I think we're cool. Let's see, what other sigils are there? Let's check out sigils, because I might want to play with some of those, right? Uh, do we have those utility blocks and items? Eh, I don't think there's anything too crazy in here. But alchemy arrays, sigils, there's some cool stuff. Air sigil's fun for flying around, but I don't think we need it. So I'm going to skip that one. Divination sigil we've made already, so we don't need that. Lava sigil's nice. Um, it just creates a source block of lava wherever you click for 1,000 LP. That is cool. Um, so it's kind of like the Serenade of the Nether ritual, but in item form. You can just literally spawn a lava block wherever you are. Uh, may or may not want to do that. We'll see. Seer's sigil is more advanced form of the divination sigil, along with showing the amount of LP in the Bound Player's Soul Network. It also shows more information when looking at a blood altar. Meh. I don't know that we need that. Sigil of Holding um, needs content pans. Uh, while blank, while holding the sigil to open its inventory, you can put multiple sigils into it. I think this is like a sigil that holds multiple other sigils. Uh, this is a magnet. Not yet implemented, by the way. Uh, sigil of the Blood Lamp. This one's cool. It places a light source in the world for... Uh, I might want to make one of those. Let's do, let's, do a, let's do a sigil of the Blood Lamp for sure. Um... Because I always like blood lamp sigils. They're neat. Also, it's a projectile, so that's super cool. So that's neat. Uh, fast Miner. Uh, when activated, it will consume 100 LP every 10 seconds and apply the haste potion effect. It's kind of neat. Uh, Frozen Lake. Not yet implemented. Frostwalker enchant as a sigil. Sigil of the Green Grove. I might want to make this one just for fun, but it's basically a sigil that works like the ritual we just set up. So, And I believe they stack. So it might be fun to see... The, the, the ritual on and the sigil on at the same time. So I'm going to make that one. Void sigil, when right clicking on any fluid, will destroy it. Meh. Water sigil, places a water source block wherever you click. Also meh. We'll see. All right, let's real quick check out the Serenade of the Nether, just because it's like a personal favorite of mine. It's, it harkens back to the old days when this was like a really cool way. Um, Shepherd Crusher, duh, 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 Serenade of the Nether. Um... When I would uh, when I would set these this ritual up early on in in Minecraft career, and then use it to generate either you know uh, power from like industrial craft. Remember that back in the day, I think I had an industrial craft magma generator feeding off of the, one of these, or or something else. So what I'm going to do is just set this up, and what you'll see is it'll just do that. Sweet. And then anytime anytime you were to grab a bucket of this lava. Yoop. It immediately replaces it. Yoop, yoop, yoop. Constant, unlimited lava. Always produced, unlimited resource. Always have it. Cool. You know, obviously, if you place a block on top, it ain't going to replace the block, but boop. See? Instant lava source all the time. I'm going to leave that there because I, since the beginning of the series, have not gone back to check on my lava lake in the nether, and I suspect that it may be drying up soon. So I'm going to leave this here. And then when that happens, I can use that as a way to fill up this. And this will become the source of our lava production. And that'll be kind of neat. So that just sitting there doesn't cost LP, but it does cost LP to generate the lava source block every, every time you do it. So for this, we're going to need the, let's see, glowstone, torch, and two redstone. Actually, I have a torch, so that's cool. And then we also have to put the orb in there. So let me just steal this orb. Borrow you for a moment. Sweet. That's cool. Look at it go. 
And then we're gonna use the alchemy array. And to make that, we take the thing that that makes with an imbued slate. Boop, which by the way, ta-da, auto crafting. <laughs> yeah, I told you, every time, every time it makes me happy. It makes me smile just to see that cool stuff right there. So I think I put this on there first and then this guy, and this is how you craft most of your sigils along with a few other things. Sweet. Awesome. And then you right click to place lights. Now, obviously that doesn't demonstrate too well how it works. Um, <clears throat> it's, almost, it's almost nighttime. So we can just quick nap. But the gist is that that's a light block. It's like a torch, but it's a nice little particle. Uh, it just It's almost invisible. Just little, little tiny particle there. And uh, obviously you can see, boop, when you place it, it, it just kind of sits there. The, the bounding blocks is kind of how you can detect it. So it's like super tiny bounding box there that you can then click on to get rid of. The other cool thing is you can shoot it as a projectile. Boom. And it'll land wherever it lands. It places a block. So that's kind of cool. So a really nice way to light up an area from a distance. So, you know, if you wanted to light up an area down there, boom, you get the idea, right? Sometimes finding that bounding box is a little bit hard, but, you know, how often do you want to remove light sources compared to how often you want to place them? Yeah, I know there's use cases for removing light sources. I'm not saying that you never do. I'm just saying that, yeah, you know, not always. Uh, so this is just two saplings, sugar cane and sugar. So two saplings... Sugar cane and sugar. And then that <clears throat> will become this. And this guy needs a reinforced slate, by the way. Interesting that the blood lamp needs an imbued. I guess you're supposed to get a tier three altar before you can have access to the blood lamp. But this is only a tier two altar, right? So this is actually really easy to get. It is not hard by any stretch. Um, and you get a really powerful growth crystal thingy. So this thing has two uses, or at least it used to. You can right click directly on plants and generate a bone meal effect. So ta-da, or ta-da. How cool is that, right? Um, so that's a really powerful bone mealing effect, or what you can do is shift right click to activate it and you'll see that it'll automatically apply a bone mealing effect in the area around your player. So it's kind of like the ritual we just set up. And by the way, it stacks with the ritual we just set up. So if we were to come over here, we should see this. Do what now? Oh, hello trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't even need to stack with the rituals we just set up because it's already ridiculous. But yeah, we turn that off. We'll turn off the redstone, turn on the ritual, and suddenly, trees for days. <laughs> How cool is that? We're never running out of wood again, I think. This is a little bit, a little bit ridiculous. Right? Isn't it? It's a little bit ridiculous. And you know me, I like ridiculous. I like ridiculous. That is cool. And then we can just deactivate it with this. So if we ever run low on wood, we will never run low on wood again. <laughs> we'll just come over here, turn on that ritual, and we'll be good. And if I'm really hurting, sigil the green grove to help me out. Plus the occasional, like, you know, bone mealing effects is nice. That's cool, man. I love that this, what I said, when did I set this up? Like episode 10? It was like a million years ago that I set this up. And it is still, to this day, behaving well. Like that's, that's a great, look how fast that thing is. That's a really fast crop growth mechanic. That is a really fast crop growth mechanic for the area of effect of it all. Like that's really good. So I'm, I'm gonna leave you with, uh, with those notes. All right guys, so I think that pretty much covers all the things I wanted to accomplish with Blood Magic at this point. As I mentioned, it's still work in progress. So there's some things left to do. Uh, because they haven't been implemented yet in Blood Magic. But for the most part, I think that covers all the things I wanted to do. There's a lot of cool gadgets and toys with it, but they kind of replicate my other existing functionality. You guys know I love the air sigil a lot, but I already have creative mode flight, so I'm not too worried about that. What I do want to do is now that so much time has passed since we've been out here, I want to go peek in on my reactors and stuff out in my mechanism area just to see uh, how things have been. I haven't really done a lot with automating this, and, and part of me wouldn't mind, um, you know, 
doing something smart with this. So we're sitting on 163 billion RF. I feel like that'll last a while. It's funny seeing that green bar be so low and you're like, oh, I'm out almost out of RF. And then you remember that almost out of RF is 160 billion. And you're like, no, I'm not out of RF. Not even a little bit. I'm fine. I'm fine. I've got lots. So how's my reactor situation out here? Here's an interesting thing because I've been peeking at this a little bit. I should be cool to run this at 305. Check. And have no problem. Boop. And he is nice and stable. Look at that coolant tank. The coolant tank is full running at 305 heat. That is awesome. That means that we've got a lot of sodium backlogged and I'm very pleased about that. Superheated sodium. Decent amount sitting in there. Looks like he's breaking even on his uh, heating up of superheated CD. So now what if I go 306? Boom. Is that cool still? Looks like we still have a net gain of sodium over here. Still breaking even-ish over here. So now I want to bump this guy up to 310. I've noticed this is something weird happens here. Notice how I'm constantly losing sodium. I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, and this guy over here, the reason we're constantly losing sodium over there is because this guy's constantly gaining sodium. He's not cooling it fast enough, and I don't know why. Um, so I can see the water tank is full, so it's not a lack of water. Um, it's not the outputting of the empty sodium because our, our cooled off sodium is empty, so that's transferring fast enough, right? It's not the input that's a problem because we're definitely gaining more sodium than we're burning. So something's happening with the cooling in this thing that it can't support more than 310 over on the other side. So see that? I don't know what that's all about. Boil rates. Um, but your boil capacity is 25 million millibuckets per tick. And I mean, we're only boiling at 6 million. So Bueller, right? Max steam and max water, like we're not back stuffing steam. So we're transferring steam out fast enough, right? We're getting water back in fast enough. You're doing fine. You're not maxed out in any way, shape, or form. So I don't know, I legitimately don't know why this is happening. Uh, so I have to go like ping in the mech discord or something, but eventually this is gonna back stuff and then it's gonna be bad times. So I need to keep this guy somewhere around 305. Oh, by the way, he also continuously heats up on account of the fact that like we're running lower and lower and lower on sodium. How bananas is that? So 305 seems to be around where my max is. So if I do that, the cooling tank can cool everything just fine. And then the only reason we have so much sodium in here is because that's how much we need. You know, that's how much we're producing per tick. So I don't know what the deal is with that. I, I definitely need to figure that out at some point. Something, something, maybe this needs to be bigger, but I can't imagine it needs to be bigger. It seems like it supports more than enough, right? Like our boiler rate, like our max boil is 25 million. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing, folks. But anyway, lots of power. So we're now producing 15 million RF a tick. 15 and a half. 15 and two thirds. Hey, buddy. And that's exciting. Um, I might let you run. So you're using 16 million with our current configuration, right? which is about where we want to be, I remember, because I was tweaking this, and that's about where we want to be. I should be able to also turn this on, by the way. Right, so now you're producing 1.16, and you're producing 15.6, so that should be a net gain of around 1 million, right? Am I right about that, between those two? So we're, we're, we're producing, or input is 16.8, our output is 16.5, nice. We have a net gain on RF production right now, and that's really cool. And I'll tell you why that's really cool. Um, because we have lots of uranium, we have lots of wood. I don't see us running out of anything anytime soon. Um, I think this is gonna produce a ton of power for us. So I think leaving this on is the way to play it, right? Like make sure that you're on because of the lever. Make sure that you're on because of the lever. And we should have a very solid net gain on power, even with this running consistently. And you're going to produce tons and tons of antimatter, which is most appreciated, right? That's super cool. Uh, and I mean, more so for fun at this point. I don't think there's a lot left for me to do with antimatter. 
there's some cool stuff to do with it, right? But I don't think there's too much more to do at this point. Like, if I didn't have an angel ring, I could use the antimatter to get creative flight mode in this. And I might make it at some point just to see, like, maybe I can have really fast creative flight. I don't know what your speed options are, but I'll figure it out. But long story short, this looks like a very stable setup at this point, and I'm very pleased about that. So everything's nice and stable temperature-wise. We've got safety valves for the heat. I just wanted to come check on this because it's been how many episodes now? Has it been like a week worth of episodes since I've even looked at Mechanisms Reactors? Um, so that's cool. So yeah, I think that's pretty much wrapped up for Blood Magic. I like everything about this build. I think it looks nice. Like this is very visually impressive. I'm happy with it. Um, I like the the secret entrance thing. I thought that was cool. I like, you know, the, the fully automated aspects of everything. And I like how overpowered the ritual that Green Grove can get. So if we ever have problems with oak wood, which, you know, we have 7,000 right now, we are burning a lot of wood to make all the sulfur we need. So we can just come down here and flip a lever, and then boom, not a problem no more. Look at it. Look at it go. Look at it already. You can tell immediately that that thing's turned on. That is awesome. That is awesome. I like it. So let's wrap up the episode here. I don't think there's a lot left for me to do in this episode, but we'll come back next episode and start working on a new project. What that new project might be, I don't know. Uh, maybe we want to play with Ars Nouveau. Check that mod out. Uh, we played with it a little bit on Forgecraft. I would like to play with it in a less laggy environment. Uh, so that might be fun. Uh, Ars Magica's um, Man and Artifice sequel is, is also a thing that we could play with because I think that got some significant updates in the last version of the pack. So there's some of that to do. Um, and then there's, you know, plenty of other mods that we haven't even touched yet that might be fun. Uh, so for now, Donald 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and play with some new stuff. For now, take it easy.